Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. I will look after my sheep, says the Lord, and I will appoint a shepherd to pasture them, and I, the Lord, will be their God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, welcome for this Holy Eucharist. With great joy, we will be offering this Mass for all your intentions and all your necessities, asking special protection during this year, this crisis, the situation that we are living, that we may be constantly supported and also uh, rescued from all sorts of trials and troubles that we may pass through. So let us confide and pray this Holy Mass offer this Mass with this intention to grow in confidence, to grow in love, and to grow in deep and strengthen our prayers during these times of, of, of pandemic and times of suffering. Today we're going to celebrate the Mass of Saint Robert Bellarmine, a cardinal, a great saint, a Jesuit saint, and also a confessor of St. Aloysius of Gonzaga. So let us ask him also to pray and intercede for us. Let us, brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, and that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my, thoughts and in my words, words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who adorned the bishop Saint Robert Bellarmine with wonderful learning and virtue to vindicate the faith of your church, grant through his intercession that in the integrity of the same faith, your people may always find joy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received, and which, in which you also stand. Through it you are also being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I hand on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have told harder than all of them, not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial psalm, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You are my God, and I give thanks to you. O oh my God, I extol you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, said the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A certain Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flax of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who, ha who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days wages and the other owed 50. Since they were unable to pay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, 
you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet, my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. He said to her, your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, Who is this who even forgiven sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, this day, Thursday, the readings is very beautiful in the sense that how God is always willing to forgive, is always willing to uh, pardon and restitute his friendship to all those who ask pardon for all those who are willing to go to him. And so, my dear sisters and brothers, just take a look at this first reading, how St. Paul, he himself recognizes that he was a sinner. He was the one who persecuted the church of God, but he also recognizes that he was loved by God, and because of this love of God that he felt, he converted and he considers himself the least of the apostles. So the one who is being loved, the one who is an object of love of God, is always considered himself, he considers himself as the least. Saying that he's not worthy of that love. The others would have deserved much more than himself. And this is a very beautiful example that we have to take into consideration that a true apostle, a true apostle is the apostle who preaches humility, who preaches humbleness, who is always considered himself as the least. He's considered himself least before the others. He never considers himself as first amongst the others. And so here, exactly in the, in the gospel, we see an opposite reaction to what St. Paul points out to us. Is this Pharisee, the Simon, in other gospel, his name is given, he's called Simon. Simon is inviting our Lord Jesus Christ for a banquet, for a dinner. And over there, we see the attitude of Simon. And our Lord gives him the answer of his attitude, of his showing himself as important, showing himself even more than our Lord Jesus Christ. As Dr. Pliny always used to comment that uh, every human being, let's consider that we are all human beings, of course, and every human being we have something which is very noble, which distinguishes ourselves from the other creature, from the other creation, is that we human beings, God has given us the gift of reason. And reason is something which uplifts the man from the rest of the creation. Because, because we see the ultimate reason of all the things that God has created. And so, 
The principal action of all human being, as St. Thomas teaches us, is that every man, when he sees something, immediately he judges the thing according to what he sees. And as a consequence of the judgment that he sees, he takes into action. He acts accordingly to what he judges. But the most important fact of a man when he sees something that he has to judge. He has to judge accordingly to what that he is seeing. Now all human beings, as we know, we are conceived with original sin. And because of the original sin, we don't have the clear vision of the thing. And that's why when we don't see clearly, we have the great opportunity or we have the great possibility to judge wrong. The only way that we can judge right when we have the grace to see through the eyes of God. When God gives us the grace to see the things as he sees. And that's why most probably we, we, all, we always tend to judge as Simon. We judge with human eyes. And when we judge through human eyes, we fail. Because, because we don't judge according to God's eyes, according to God's will. And you see, my dear sisters and brothers, how important is to always ask Our Lady, always ask our holy intercessors to give us the right judgment as how our Lord Jesus Christ would judge each and everything. And Simon has, ju has judged, as the Lord says, he judged correctly, but he judged correctly through human eyes. But he has not judged through wisdom. He has not judged through the will of God. And so our Lord corrects him with goodness. He corrects him by saying, Simon, do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them, wiped them with, their hair, with her hair. What a shame for Simon. He who has invited our Lord to come to dine in his house has not given that attention that he is supposed to give. So you see, we can remove a lot of examples, a lot of lessons from this teaching that our Lord is opening the eyes of Simon. How can a person forget what he has to do to someone who has invited? It's a tradition. It's the custom of that time. Everyone who comes from out, he comes walking. And naturally speaking, his feet is covered with dust. And it's a tradition, it's a custom. Before entering the house, you wash the feet of the person. Or you ask the slave to wash the feet. And Simon didn't do this. Why? Because he didn't have the humility to recognize that our Lord was an important person. That our Lord was above him. And that our Lord was not just a human person as someone who knows the law, but he did not recognize that our Lord was God. And so we can continue this text step by step, how our Lord is opening his eyes, showing that how this woman, being a sinner, she recognizes the divinity of our Lord. She recognizes the superiority, superiority of our Lord, and she's willing to put herself in the condition of a servant, someone who loves the person. And so, my dear sisters and brothers, we should look through the eyes of God. We should always see each and every one who surrounds us with the eyes of God. We should always treat each and every one with the eyes of God. That means we should treat others with superiority. We should treat others with distinction. We should treat others with kindness, we should treat others with goodness, we should treat others 
with the love of God. Why? Because this person who is next to me is the son of God. This person who is next to me is called to live with God for all eternity. Because this person who is next to me is a person created in the image and likeness of God. So you see, my dear sisters and brothers, how often we tend to judge others through human eyes. And as a natural consequence, we tend to despise we tend to put the person aside. We don't give that necessary attention that the person deserves. And so much so, we always ignore the person. And this is what we shouldn't do this in our lives. Give importance to the others. And you will have importance. Lift up others and you will be lifted. Treat others with kindness and goodness and you will be treated with kindness and goodness by God. And that's why it's very important for us to act as St. Paul acted, to be humble. Those who are humble, who humbles himself before the others, God uplifts them before the others. And that's why there is no greater sin that a man can commit over here on earth is the same sin that Lucifer in heaven commit, committed. It's the sin of pride. It's pride what makes us equal to God. It's a pride that makes us feel superior to others. It's a pride that makes us to put the others down. And so my dear sisters and brothers, the only thing, as St. John Climacus, he, he remembers us, he teaches us, the only thing that devil cannot imitate, pay attention, put this into your mind, practice this. The only thing that the devil cannot imitate, he can imitate everything. He can, the devil can imitate to be a rich, a devil can imitate to be an elegant person. A devil can imitate to be the intelligent person. A devil can also imitate to be pious, as if he's praying. A devil can also imitate everything. Only one thing he cannot imitate. One. He cannot humble himself. What he cannot, we should. And that's why we will crush the head of the devil by doing exactly what he cannot do. And so that's how we will obtain the friendship of our Lord. That's how we will obtain the grace of God. Let's be humble. Let's recognize the superiority of the others. Let's recognize the gift that God has given to the others and uplift others. Others may shine. Others may be promoted. Others may be more known. And let us give joy to our Lord Jesus Christ by humiliating ourselves and to be humble ourselves. Praise be our Lord Jesus Christ.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept our sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings we set upon this sacred altar on the feast day of blessed Saint Robert Bellarmine, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength every new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the God of all, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis the Pope, Edmundo our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Karan Riki, whom who you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her cherished spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on the sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, of God you take away the sins, away the sins of, of the world. world. Grant, grant us, us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion prayer. <clears throat> My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the examples of blessed Saint Robert Bellarmine, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you once again for all those who have assisted and accompanied this Holy Mass. We will always pray for your intentions, and please don't forget to send your intentions, and with great joy, we will have the opportunity to celebrate in our daily Mass. Once again, please share and comment also the, on the Holy Mass that the Heralds of the Gospel celebrates every day, and this way we can also reach to more and more people, and more people can benefit from this grace. A special blessing for each and every one of you all. Have a good evening and also a blessed week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Now we'll sing the Hail Holy Queen in Latin. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Espes Nostra Salve. Ad te clamamus, exules filii evri, ad te suspiramus. Gemenetes et flenetes, in ag lacrimarum vale. Eia ergo, advocata nostra, in los tuos misericordies oculos, ad nos converete. Et Iesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium, post in Dei. O clemens, O pia, O dulcis, Virgo Maria, Pro nobis sanita dei genitris, udigni efficiamu, promissionibus Christi.